Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Actuary, and in this video, I want to look at some of the top actuarial books that you should start reading right now. The first one is The Drunkard's Walk, and it's about how randomness rules our lives. It's by a physicist who's also written a book with Stephen Hawking, and it's very much about the topic of uncertainty. The next book also touches on this, and it's called Fooled by Randomness, and it's the hidden role of chance in life and in the markets. Now, this is written by a statistician, and he went on to write another more well-known book called The Black Swan, which talks about the impact of highly improbable events. The next book is by a historian called Niall Ferguson, and it describes the history of finance, and I absolutely loved it. There's also a television series for those of you who don't like reading. The next book is one that I haven't read myself, but my lecturer used to constantly nag us, and I've actually just looked up a little bit of quotes by the author, who is a psychologist, and judging by these quotes, they're really, really cool, and I'm going to start reading this book very soon. It's called Thinking Fast and Slow. The next book is called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Now, this is by Dale Carnegie, and it's a famous book, and I think it's very important for actors who are sometimes stereotyped for not having the best personality or not having the best social skills. So it's a great way to brush up on those. The next book I have spoken about in one of my previous videos, it's written by a lawyer, but it deals with how data mining and big data is going to be changing the world going forward. It's called Super Crunches. Next, we have a book by a psychologist who's also a behavioral economist. It's called Predictable Irrationality, and it's the hidden forces that shape our decisions. And what I loved about this book is that it challenged a lot of the economic theory and first principles and actually suggested that they were wrong. So definitely try to get your hands on that one. Probably one of the most powerful books in this list is the Enterprise Risk Management, and it's from Incentives to Controls. Now, you will be reading this book if you decide to take on the SERA profession, as it is the course reading, but I think it's a great book for every actor to start reading and understanding how important risk is in the corporate world. I want to talk about this book by Mary Buffett, and, and she is the daughter of the world-famous Warren Buffett. And what she talks about in this book are some of Warren's secrets or, or how he goes about determining which stocks to purchase. And I read this book while I was still at school and it got me fascinated with the stock market. Today, I don't believe in everything that is written here because of you know, different worldviews, but it is still a great book to get an introduction to investing on the stock market. Another book that I haven't read, but everybody keeps talking about this one, is called The Alchemy of Finance. And it talks about George Soros, who's one of the most famous investors on Wall Street, and how he made lots and lots of money. The next book is one that I'm currently reading at the moment. It's uh, Animal Spirits, and it's about how psychology drives the economy and why it matters for global capitalism. What I love about this book is the author is a guy from Yale, and I used to listen to his lectures while I drove to university on behavioral economics. I highly recommend that you check out that lecture series as well as getting your hands on this book. Okay, we're coming near to the end of this list, and I thought no list is complete without The Intelligent Investor. And this is by Benjamin Graham, who's kind of like the godfather of value investing. He laid down quite a lot of the theory that many people would develop further going forward. So it's a great book to get the basics on investing. And finally, I think a lot of you guys are going to be surprised, but I have included Ecclesiastes, which is written by King Solomon, who headed up the empire of the Israelites back in the day. And you might be saying, why am I putting in a Bible uh, book over here? Well, you read this book and it talks about diversification. It talks about randomness. It talks about chance and all these other things that these other books are touching on, Ecclesiastes kind of said them first, and it was written way, way, way back in the day. So it's very fascinating to read something that's so old and yet touches on so many modern points that makes up actuarial science. 
So anyway, that's it for this video. I'm going to be mentioning a few bonus books. Um, for instance, there has, you know, there has to be a guide on the HP 12C. This is the actuarial calculator of choice, and it's impossible to pass your exams without understanding how to use one of these things. Um, another bonus book are, of course, the books that I've written myself. And I do want to get into writing a few more books. I mean, I want to write a whole book on how to become an actuary, go through all the various steps. I find it's, it's too much to say for just, say, one video. I might make a video series, though, um, if I don't come around to writing the book. I also want to write a book about the future of finance, uh, you know, what Bitcoin and blockchain and all that type of stuff. I also want to talk about investment strategy in another book. And finally, how to value these weird cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So let me know if you are interested in any of those books. And I'll definitely get, get to, to writing them when I have a, have a spare moment. But before that, you need to get your hands on some sort of Bitcoin book. And you need to start learning about this new technology. So it's not essential for actuarial science. But I think it is essential for your future. Specifically, anyone in the financial future needs to understand Bitcoin. Also talking about the future, we all know artificial intelligence is going to replace actuaries any day now. So you need to start learning programming. It doesn't matter what programming language you learn, just as long as you start learning one so that you can control computers before they start controlling you. And that, that's about it. What I do also want to just finally end this video off is these are some of the topics of future videos that I'm thinking of releasing. So please let me know if there's any video here that you'd want me to do first. Or if you've got any other video requests, let me know in the comments section below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to see the rest of my videos. Cheers.